Hello, my name is Professor Inder Kumar Rana. I am a Meritus Fellow at IIT Bombay in the Department of Mathematics. Welcome to this course called Calculus for Economics, Commerce and Management students. I will give you first a brief uh, outline about the course and then we will start discussing uh, the main topic namely calculus and its applications. So, the aim of the course, basically we would like to develop and strengthen the basic calculus concepts and skills that are needed for the study of uh, subjects like economics, commerce and management. We shall assume a very little knowledge of uh, the mathematical concepts because uh, many of you might have left uh, mathematics as a subject after uh, 10th standard onwards and you might not have studied mathematics uh, in the later uh, courses in your college. So, we will try to define uh, basic concepts as and when required and some of the concepts probably will leave it for you to read and revise so that uh, you follow the course comfortably and learn the techniques. Um, however, uh, there are a few things as I said we will assume that you are familiar with the basic concepts of financial mathematics namely uh, the percentage, the what is the concept of percentage, how it is calculated, what it means and so on. We will also assume your uh, knowledge about uh, profit and loss when things are bought and sold there is a profit, there is a loss, how much percent profit, how much percentage of loss and so on uh, other things. Then we will also assume uh, your knowledge about uh, simple and compound interest because many of the, our examples will deal with uh, these uh, concepts and these are very commonly used in economics, commerce and management. So, these concepts we will uh, assume that you know it very well. If you have forgotten these things, I will strongly suggest that you look up a book um, of uh, say mathematics of standard 10 or so and revise it. Uh, mathematics uh, one can wonder um, uh, as students of economics, commerce and management why mathematics is required for higher studies in non-science subjects and non-engineering subjects. Uh, yes, I agree that long back uh, maybe around 20 years back one thought mathematics is not required by non-engineers and non-scientists. But uh, now um, there is hardly any field in our uh, day to day life where uh, mathematics is not used, uh, is not useful and much more so uh, in economics, commerce and management. So, I will try to give you a brief uh, uh, reason why mathematics uh, is uh, required and is important. So, first of all mathematics helps in focusing on the common structure of the problem. Uh, the problem may be arising in economics, it may be arising in physics, it may be arising in uh, the commerce, it may be arising in mathematics itself. Uh, there is a common uh, structure behind all the problems and so uh, one can forget the context where these problems arise, solve them mathematically uh, without any knowledge, without any uh, uh, concepts of the other fields. And the reason for that are the following, mathematics allows one to formulate and study different looking problems as one. So, one studies the mathematic problem and then applies it to the various fields. We will give you examples later, I am just trying to give you a broader view of uh, the topic. This helps in focusing on the common structure of the problem, what is the problem and how does one analyze it. And uh, mathematics language is not ambiguous as compared to the verbal expressions. In mathematics an expression has one and only one meaning, it cannot be uh, two different meanings. That means, a mathematical expression if it is read and interpreted, it can be only one interpretation possible for it. So, that is there is no ambiguity in interpreting. And in mathematics problems, uh, one can specify precisely the conditions under which the mathematical uh, problem is going to be solved. 
so assumptions are very clear in mathematics. They do not vary as you uh, try to analyze the problem. So, and with mathematical formulations, once the problem is stated, the conditions are specified, you make very logical conclusions and uh, very precise uh, deductions can be made. So, if some conditions are satisfied, if that is the problem, then these will be the conclusions. So, that is how mathematics uh, works. And of course, uh, as I said, mathematics helps you to become literate in the language of uh, any higher studies, more so in uh, modern economics, commerce and management. So, uh, all these uh, fields, non, even the non-sciences and non-engineering fields require the mathematical maturity if you want to do some higher studies. How mathematics is really used? So, let me give you a brief outline. So, step 1, uh, one observes a real world phenomena and collects data. The problem could be arising in economics, could be arising in management, could be arising in physics, could be arising in engineering sciences anywhere. So, something that you want to analyze, you observe that phenomena and collect the data. For example, uh, on a road some accidents are happening. Uh, so, you collect the data, how many accidents are happening, whether they are happening in the morning or in the evening and you try, one would like to find out the reasons why such things are happening. So, one collects the data uh, about the number of accidents happening. So, this is what you observe an experiment, you ex observe a phenomena and collect the data from that. Once the data is collected, you try to formulate a mathematical model out of it. For example, problem of uh, uh, accident happening on a road, it could be that there is no speed limit fixed on the road. And so, one need to uh, formulate what could be a reasonable speed limit that should be fixed. So, that will depend upon uh, on the data as for example, how many uh, whether the uh, road is being used by heavy traffic or light traffic, what is the size of a heavy traffic truck and what should be the distance between uh, two cars uh, and if they are if there is a speed limit uh, then how much distance uh, should be there between uh, different vehicles so that if some one breaks then it should not go and hit the next one so that kind of uh, uh, for mathematical formulation is required for example how much is that braking distance how much is the time required to stop a car uh, before hitting it next car sort of. So, this is the kind of mathematical formulation uh, one has to do. For example, it could be a problem in uh, uh, predicting uh, the forecast of rains uh, in a particular country or in a particular city. So, one would like to collect the data over the years, what is the temperature, what is the pressure and so on and then one tries to formulate uh, some mathematical equations, a model which tries to say that okay, if these are the conditions, these are the weather conditions, these are the temperature conditions, these are the um, wind directions and so on, then uh, one, one tries to solve a problem and um, similar things happen in almost every field. So, this is formulating those mathematical problem which will help us to make some deductions. Apply the mathematical tools and draw the logical conclusion. So, once the data is collected, and you have formulated the mathematical model, put the conditions, you apply the mathematical tools to solve that problem, make the logical conclusions. Once the conclusions are available, you compare the conclusions with the actual data that you have collected on the step 1, whether your conclusions match with uh, your collection of data, your observe, actual observations. If they match, probably your model is correct and you can generalize it. If not, you have to tweak the model a bit more and do it. So, this is how mathematical process, this is what is called the process of mathematical modeling uh, is about. So, in this course, we will not be uh, dealing with uh, all this mathematical modeling, we will be seeing how in uh, situations of economics, commerce and management, some problems can be formulated as mathematical problems how mathematical tools can be applied and deductions can be made. So, mainly we will be concerned with 2 and 3, step 2 and 3 and that more precisely how calculus tools are used in 
form uh, in applying uh, to a mathematical model and making conclusion. So, that is mainly is going to be the uh, crux of the course. Right. So, uh, about this course, uh, for example, let me also say uh, for example, how the calculus tools will be used. So, uh, to be more precise, let us look at uh, the calculus and app its applications in our field of say economics. You will see how there is a statement uh, you might have come across in your courses in economics, the equilibrium price is at which quantities demanded equal to the quantities supplied. So, that is what is called uh, equilibrium uh, in economic models and this refers to the mathematical statement that a solution of a system of two linear equations in two variables. So, that is how the mathematical problem will arise out of it and will be so, can be solved. For another problem that you can look up is the following say general equilibrium of a system what does that mean. So, mathematically this is analyzed by solution uh, solving a system of linear equations. So, this goes in the, uh, in the subject of uh, applications of linear algebra to uh, economic models. For example, there could be quantity demanded depends on the price and the consumption depends upon the level of income. So, this is a common assumptions in uh, economic models. So, these are examples of functional relationships in mathematics. So, there is a relation of function which says the quantity demanded is a function of the price or the consumption depends on the level of income. So, it is a function of the income. So, the functional relationships describe these things very well. Marginal concepts such as the marginal cost, revenue, utility, product, tendency of consumption etcetera, all these fall under the concept of derivative of functions in mathematics and their applications. And profit maximization production frontier etcetera, these are the topics, these are the uh, uh, problems in economics that are best analyzed under the maximization or optimization in calculus problems using calculus and so on. We will discuss these things in detail soon, uh, slowly as we progress the course. I just wanted to give a snapshot of how mathematics is going to be used in economics, commerce and management. To uh, get maximum benefit from this course, here are my suggestions that be uh, interactive, do not just be a passive observer of lectures. Of course, because this is a offline course, you will be given the videos for this course every week, you will listen to the videos. So, from these are not going to be face to face lectures, these are going to be uh, video lectures where you will be listening to lectures trying to understand the concepts and then. Uh, so, uh, there is a lot of responsibility on your shoulders that you have to be interactive. When something is not clear, you have to probably put a, a question on the forum saying what it is that concept about or try to analyze yourself, look up the inter, uh, uh, web and try to find out the answers. Most likely you will not have such problems, but you will have to be interactive. Understanding of mathematical concepts is the best achieved by discussions. If possible, try to form some groups. If two or three of you are taking this course together, it is best that you form a group where you uh, watch the video uh, videos, lecture videos together and try to discuss with each other the topics concerned. Because uh, we have found students learn best or even uh, everybody learns best when uh, there is a discussion on the topic or the problem underway. So, and of course, this is we keep on telling our students uh, that revise the concepts, revise the topics, discuss, do not postpone it and doing the exercises yourself is a very useful thing in strengthening concepts. Whenever you uh, listen to a lecture, see a concept being discussed exercises are meant for you to revise and strengthen how you much you have understood that concept. So, do the exercises yourself that is a very uh, and it works wonders once you get the hang of doing exercises yourself it will help you greatly. Right. Um, this course is going to last for about 8 weeks. 
So, not all the mathematics needed um, or can be taught in these 8 weeks, time is short. So, um, however, we will give you enough uh, material to get started on trying to use mathematics to learn and to apply in your topics. So, um, a good mathematical beginning can be made and that is my hope. So, this is our hope uh, at the end of the course mathematics will not appear to be as difficult as you probably might have thought so and you have learned at least how to learn mathematics yourself. So, all the best uh, for this course and before you uh, uh, go to the next topic I strongly suggest you will be given an assignment uh, about a quiz called basic mathematical competency quiz. So, have a look at that quiz and try to uh, see the uh, solve the problems or solve the questions in that and see whether uh, you are comfortable with the basic mathematical concepts. This quiz is more about uh, the financial mathematics uh, that I had talked about and if you find uh, you are not very comfortable at some of the concepts in that, so we strongly says that you uh, revise that. So, this is about the general uh, um, background of uh, the course, what we are going to do and so on. So, let us uh, begin with uh, our main topic uh, for this uh, course namely called calculus. Uh, so, I will start with uh, a bit of uh, history about this uh, topic called calculus. Uh, it has a history of around 2000 years. So, germs of calculus lie in the work of the Greek philosophers. Some of them I will name Antiphon around uh, 430 years before Christ, Eudoxus around 408 to 355 before uh, Christ and then Euclid around 300 uh, BC and uh, of course, Archimedes uh, around 287 to 212 BC. These are some of the philo Greek philosophers, uh, of course, they contributed a lot to lot of uh, uh, branches of mathematics, physics and so on, but as far as our course, uh, our subject calculus is concerned, uh, these are some of the people who uh, contributed for calculus. Let us uh, move over to, uh, you will see that from around 200 BC to around 1642 no real progress was made as far as calculus is concerned. The real progress started only after the works uh, of Sir Isaac Newton uh, around his period is 1642 to 1727 and uh, G. W. Leibniz uh, around between 1746 and 1716. So, both these uh, people uh, initiated what the modern calculus uh, they can be thought of as the uh, inventors of the modern calculus. Uh, let me point out that Isaac Newton was uh, more or less a trained uh, mathematician, while uh, Leibniz was a non-mathematician. Leibniz was uh, is something like an ambassador from France to France to UK. In one of the uh, diplomatic parties, he met uh, a physicist uh, Hygenes. Uh, you, some of you might have heard the name Hygenes, a physicist. And while talking to him in the party, he got interested in, in mathematics and uh, that is the beginning of his mathematical career you can say. And Leibniz uh, gave uh, his ideas, gave birth to uh, calculus as we say see it today. So, Leibniz and uh, Newton are both <coughs> credited with the uh, invention of uh, calculus. Um, Newton uh, had worked on calculus, but never uh, he did not publish his work while Leibniz uh, worked and published. So, uh, when Leibniz published, Newton said oh, he has discovered this uh, calculus uh, 7 years back and so on. So, a great controversy started between uh, Newton and Leibniz who is the real originator of uh, uh, calculus. 
And this controversy uh, went on for about uh, six years. There is a nice history about uh, taking credit or giving credit who discovered it. And uh, so there was a kind of a wrestling between uh, Isaac Newton and Leibniz about uh, who discovered calculus. But eventually uh, both of uh, were given the equal credit and uh, they are both added slightly different approaches but leading to the same concepts in calculus. So, um, after their work it was discovered that though uh, there were a lot of uh, ideas in the works of Newton and Leibniz, a rigorous foundation of calculus if it is to be done that needs understanding of the con following concepts. Namely, what is the concept of a real number? Uh, in 18th century, beginning of 18th century, what is a real number was not clear. It was not mathematically defined, not mathematically very well understood. There was the concept of a function that also was not very clear. What is a function mathematically? And the concept of limit, all these three were basic foundational for the rigorous foundations of calculus. So, at least the works of Newton and Leibniz led to realizing what are the problems which we had to tackle. So, um, and to all of this there is a basic namely the basis of all this is the concept of set and set theory. So, what we will do is we will start with the concept of uh, set and set theory basically. Um, we will not go in detail about sets and set theory, we'll, what is the minimal thing required for our calculus course. Then we will go over to the concept of uh, real number and uh, describe properties of real number whatever we require. Then we will go over to the concept of functions and then limits and then to other concepts in uh, calculus. So, this is a route uh, we are going to follow for our uh, course. So, let us begin with the concept of uh, set theory. So, why sets are required and what is a set? So, let us begin with observing that in everyday uh, life we often uh, group objects as a single entity depending on a common sort of attribute or a property they have and uh, so that things become manageable. So, let me give you some uh, examples about this. For example, we have a box of sweets. There is a box in which there are sweets of different types. So, to manage this different type of sweets, maybe to gift to somebody and so on, uh, we pack them in a nice box. So, this is a box of sweets. So, different things, but this common attribute is they are all sweets and edible. So, that is Next let us look at for example, a something similar a bag of toffees, okay. the toffees of different types are packed in a sort of a bag. So, the bag has a collection of objects namely toffees and uh, they have a common attribute say they may or may not have a common attribute in general, but here they do have. Students in a class, so they are all uh, could be boys, could be girls, students sit in a class, they are grouped in a class because we want to manage uh, who will come and teach that uh, collection of students, what time they will study, what topic and so on. So, uh, students in a class that is the collection and put in a uh, box called the class. Uh, sketch of pens and pencils that is another collection. So, this is a box containing sketch pens and pencils. A box full of uh, shirts of different right cloths. So, that is a bag having, so there is a collection of objects put in inside. So, um, we are interested in finding a sort of analyzing or what should be called as the class collection or a list of objects in a in a right. So, a, we formally we define a set is a well defined collection of well defined objects. 
So, a well defined collection of well defined objects that means, it is a collection which is well defined and there are objects in it which are also well defined. To understand the, what well defined means, we will look at some examples. So, uh, our basic thing is we are looking at a concept called collection of objects and we are trying to understand what is well defined collection and what is well defined object mean. So, I will do it in the next part of the lecture.